Weencast, a Ween podcast with Rory Gibbons and Shane Pretzky. This is Shane. This is Rory. And this is Weencast. Yes, How indeed. How is everyone doing? We are back. Okay. So, we are going to go back in time tonight. We're going to talk about another one of the shows from our youth. Um, this is the third show that I attended. Rory, this is be the, the... This is my second the, show. The second one for you. And this was... New Year's Day, one one ninety nine, at the Trocadero in Philadelphia. Um, I guess just a couple of things about the show at the time and 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 whatnot. Um, it was the third show that I've third Ween show that I've seen, and it was the third Ween show at the Trocadero. And unfortunately, this is the last time that they played. The Trocadero in Philly. It's the last time I saw them at the Trocadero. I didn't realize it was the last time they played there. No, I mean I'm 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 fairly certain that after this, you know, they basically started playing some some bigger places, and the next place, the next time that they played Philadelphia was at the Electric Factory. Huh. So I don't think I don't think after this they they ever played the, the Trocadero again. Um, which is. You know, it's good. It's good for them, and and you know, uh, it's uh, it's good to see them in different places and have some different experiences. But the Trocadero is just a, it is a, it's just a great club. It's just a great place. Um, it, it's kind of one of those places where it doesn't matter where you are. There's there's no bad spot. There's no bad, uh, you know, seat in the house, so to so to speak. Um, so it's kind of bittersweet that this was the last time that they would play the Troc. But you know, they. They had sold it out twice. It was the second time that they played the truck, and it was, you know, sold out. The last show that we talked about, which was uh, the beginning of '98 at the truck, that was the first time they sold it out, and this was another sold out show. So, how many times are you going to pl- sell out the same place before you, you know, you find somewhere to play in that city that's that's bigger? Yeah, and so that was for me. So I it was at the uh, 1996 Trocadero show that we've already talked about. It was a pretty small crowd for that one. And so to come back to this one and to find out that it was the final show at the Troc and to see how much bigger the crowd and how it was packed and uh, quite a send off for the Troc. It's too bad they haven't too bad they haven't gotten back there. Right, right, right. Well, again, you know, this is uh, this was one one ninety nine. As we said, it was a Friday night. OK, so there Friday there night. Again, we talked about that fr- <laughs> Friday night. Um you know, but there again, and also, you know, this is around the holidays because this is New Year's Day. So you got people, you know, people are on vacation. People are not working, obviously, or on, on New Year's Day. So it's, you know, it's easy for them to come to something like this. Um, we had a pretty good crowd of people that came with us. We'll get to that in a second. Real quick, I just want to touch base on um, this is another one of those shows that, um, is readily available. You can listen to this entire show right now on YouTube. If you search uh, Ween Trocadero 1999, there's a full-length video that you can listen to the whole thing, and there's also a full-length video. Um, this was the first time I had ever gotten a Ween uh, bootleg tape, VHS tape, of the video of this show. I think it's the same one that's on YouTube. I think there's only really one video recording that ever sort of like got out there. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Um, but it's on YouTube. So you can, you can listen to the whole thing or you can watch the whole thing. So that's fucking cool. Um, it's out there. So yeah, so yeah, it's out there. So check out, check out this show. If, uh, if you weren't there or if you didn't, um, if you never listened to it, um, it's definitely worth checking out. we'll talk about a little bit about, um, getting down there and, uh, the people that went with us. Yeah, so um, if you if you if I may, I'd like to kind of uh, lay it out for everybody. So I remember uh, that we we were still meeting at the high school at this point, and this was so this is 1999. So I'm uh, on break from winter break from college. So I was back in town because uh, I was a student at Penn State at the time, but I was back in only visiting, mm-hmm. and uh, so we're still meeting. 
the high school parking lot, which is fun. Uh, but you and I, we were at your house um, and getting ready for for a, a New Year's. Uh, I believe your parents did the traditional pork and sauerkraut, if I remember I, correctly. I would just, I would just, I don't remember exactly, but but yeah, I would but, assume uh, so. Yes, traditional New Year's Day, and and so I know you and I to pr- kind of get ready for the show, kind of stepped aside into your room and and uh, gotten a, some special uh, pizza toppings that that. Um, you know, we kind of snapped on before uh, going to the show, and so yeah, it's funny how we had we had pizza toppings, but no pizza. I don't know how that happens, but um, but yeah, I I do kind of remember something. <laughs> so the the funny thing about that is that, uh, you know, we were young and dumb and not sure how things worked, and and I guess I sort of figured that ah, we'd be okay by the time we get on the road and and everything. But um, dinner, what dinner was kind of weird because uh, let's just say um, my stomach was a little bit uh, kind of upside down from the pizza toppings, and so so dinner was a bit crazy. But but we got out of there, and uh, and so we get down to the school, and I remember it was funny because you had forgotten the maps, you know, because obviously we're not smartphones, and you're not looking at your phone for a map yet. It's 1999. And you had we got everyone at the uh, the school and we're ready to go, and then you realized that you had left the maps back at the house. And at this point, I'm just like, dude, I'm not going back there. Like, I can't go back there. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know if I, you went by yourself I, or if someone else went with you. I think someone else had had taken me back up to to, to my house, which is only. Um, you know, between five and, and 10 minutes. But, but yeah, um, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, Oh man, like I forgot my dad's directions. And it was just, you know, uh, <laughs> looking back on it now, you know, w- we were young at the time. We talked about this in, in a couple of our, our past episodes, but, um, you know, you're young and you don't understand. It's like, it must've just been the most simple, like thing, like, okay, get on 422, then get on, you know, this, then get on that, you know, but we forgotten the directions, so I had to go back. I think someone had ran me up to the house because I don't think I had my car for some reason. Maybe I drove myself. I don't. I don't remember either. But I remember getting, going in, grabbing the directions, coming back down. Everyone was waiting for me, and then uh, making sure everyone had like the same thing. There was three cars. We had three cars of of people. Um, we'll talk about that in a second too. But. I remember making sure everyone was okay, like, okay, are we good? You know, like, this is the directions, this is what we have to do. Getting back in the car, and about 30 seconds later, just completely losing my mind. (laughs) It was a... Like, just, I had held on up until then, and we were, we had just gotten out of the parking lot and going down the hill... Um, at the high school and just I, re- I specifically remember you were next to me we were in the back seat and just saying like I don't even know what the fuck is going on anymore <laughs> yeah it was so our car We'd just gotten in the car our car was K-Dog uh, Isaac you and me and it was K-Dog's car he was driving excuse me Isaac was in the front seat and we were in the back just hanging out like two silly silly people hanging out in the back it was crazy because Isaac had this, uh, like, I, I kid you not, he had this, like, head to toe. It was, like, this yellow outfit, a rain right. slicker. It was, like, this, like, shiny, like, I don't know what material it is, <laughs> but it was just, like, and, and, and on a normal day, that would look ridiculous. It but, was, like, a track suit. It and so like a... I kept going on and on about how he, he was, like, a gangster. He, you're, like a, you're a gangster. <laughs> I was concerned that he thought I was, like, insulting him, so I was just, like, please, Isaac – I don't mean that as an insult. Like, don't don't hurt me, you know. And he's just up there, like you know, hanging out, and laughing, and just thinking we're being silly. <laughs> but um, but the drive down. So I remember yeah. a lot of the mollusk, and I remember just singing and just really getting in the mood for the Ween show. And so it was a great, you know, wind up to the show. Um, we get there, the uh, you know we had to wait in line outside. I remember it being cold. Um, I remember so we'll get into a minute, I guess, with everyone who was there. But another one of our friends, Jared, was there, and he had his big um, Letterman soccer coat, even though right. Um, but uh, and it was like big and puffy, 
And so it made it, he was a, he's a pretty big kid anyway, like, you know, big chested, but it made him look like really big. And I remember this little black guy that was like going in and out of the line. He might've been, you know, homeless or something, sort of just like seeing if he could get a dollar here and there, you know, razzing people. And I, and he was just, wouldn't let our friend alone. Cause he was, he was like, man, you, a fo- you a football player. Yeah. And you look like you're a football player. And it was just like, no, I'm not a football player. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, and so just, yeah, it was just like a, as you're waiting in line and it's just like, okay, this guy's like, you know, what is this conversation? Yeah. I think he must've asked, um, he must've asked somebody like, you know, who is the band that's, that's here to like, who are you guys waiting to, to get in to see? And somebody must've told him ween or, you know, he found out that ween was in there and he kept saying like, you know, uh, oh, you people out here waiting to see ween. Yeah. You know, you, you can't be going in there giving ween a hard time, you know, hitting on ween's women. You know, and basically just trying to make the people laugh and ultimately trying to get money. You know what I mean? Like, oh, here, you know, here's a dollar, man. Here's it, you know, or whatever. Um, And, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had what, 12 people um, Um, total. Yeah, I think so. So because we had three cars of 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 four people, so we basically were just kind of like, okay, we have enough. If if somebody wants to start start some shenanigans with us, it's like we got, you know, we got eight dudes here. You know what I mean? Like no one's gonna, you know, no one's gonna start any shit. So we're just laughing along with this dude, and you know, um, just like dude, say whatever you want. You know, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> but he, he didn't, you know. No one, no one was was starting any trouble. He was just, he was just trying to, you know, make people laugh and and trying to get him to 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 give him a tip, basically, like give me yeah. a dollar because I'm entertaining you, you folks, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, all right, dude. But I do remember it being very cold, and you know, standing out waiting to get in, and uh, I remember uh, sort of coining the phrase um, "stuck in permanent groove mode" because we were just like rocking back and forth and like you know, like shuffling around just to try to stay warm, you know, like how you just keep trying to like, you know, just move a little bit while you're standing still. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember doing a lot of that. I don't remember exactly how long we were, we, you know, we had to wait to get in. It was probably like a half hour. It couldn't have been, you know, I don't think it was that long. Yeah. I don't remember from, exactly from how long it was, but we already went over who was in our car. There was two other cars and I think eight people. Um, so I think, uh, of our friends, we had Corey with a C, uh, Kristen, Mark, Jared, uh, Steve, Shannon, Mike, and Mark. I think is everyone right. that's there. And by all means, if any of our friends listen to this, please correct us if you were there. Uh, Twelve people. I'm, I'm I think pretty... this is the most of the first few shows. This is definitely the most people to go to one show. I think. I I, I was just going to say I think this is the this is the 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 biggest crew we had at least. Um, definitely up until now and probably of, of all the shows that, you know, I had been to, um, especially, you know, all people from our hometown, like all people that went to high school with us, um, Ole Valley. Yeah. Cause at um, this point this was still like, okay, high school was just a year and a half ago. So, you know, everyone's still feeling pretty connected to hometown. And so you still have your hometown crew. Um, right. And also and also the fact that it's, you know, like we said, this is around the holidays. This is New Year's Day that this yeah. show is, is taking place. So everyone's home from college. Um, you know, everyone has the day off. So it's like um, it, th- this is to me is like the show where we had convinced the most normal people to, to go. Well, you know what I mean? It's people on the, that we that I have been to a show before or since. So this is like yeah, the only totally. show that they've been to, which kind of yeah. leads us into the next, you know, part of this, which is kind of get into the show itself. Because if this is the only show you're going to go to, I got to tell everyone out there, this was a baller show. Like this was a really good show. And we're going to get into the, all the nitty gritties of the set list and, and the highlights. Absolutely. But, uh, Absolutely. So, yeah. It, yeah. So it's a fantastic show. And... Um, if you want to go into the uh, the opening act, Shane, because I know that that's a big, uh, you know, the, the opening act for this show, I think, was the best opening act. One of the best opening acts of any show that we've been to, Ween, for sure. Um, so yeah, I, you know, if you want to kind of take it from there. Sure. So so the Sound of Urchin, or just Sound of Urchin, uh, opened for Ween on 
all three of these shows, um, I guess we should we should mention they had played New Year's Eve um, the night before, which was uh, new in New York. This was New Year's Day, New Year's night um, in Philadelphia, and then they would play um, the night after in D.C. So it was going to be all three of those shows, and Sound of Urchin opened for them um, for all three of them. Uh, up until now, you know, Sound of Urchin w- w- it was like, okay, you saw them on like the thing that said like, you know, Ween, Sound of Urchin, but we didn't know anything about them. We didn't know who they were or whatever. And the thing that I love about the Urchin set list, if you listen to this and you can on YouTube, and I know because I uploaded it myself. So if you, ch- <laughs> you can listen to the entire Urchin set on YouTube as well. And when it starts off, if you're listening, you can hear just the music that they were just playing, like on the, you know, like on the stereos, like uh, um, while people are waiting for the show to start. So it's literally like you're listening to it as as like you're in the crowd and you can hear everything. You can hear them. You can hear the music stop them come out and introduce themselves. And I mean, it's so quiet. You can hear like a pin drop because. The crowd doesn't know who these guys are. And a ween crowd is not going to give the opener any love. You know, we talked about this the, on our last episode, or the 98 show. Um, but you can tell that um, they were going to win this crowd over. And they totally succeeded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you listen you listen to the to the urchin set of, of this show... And uh, Chris, who's Tomato, that's his his, his stage name or, or whatever you want to say. Um, he's the drummer and also like the lead vocalist. You can tell that he's set out to get this crowd going, get this crowd fired up, and they totally do it. Oh, it's a raucous so, opener. It was a raucous opener, and they played yeah, a lot of songs yeah. too. Um, just a just a fucking great band. If there's anybody that's listening to this. That's never listened to Urchin. I find that hard to believe. But um, if you've never listened to Urchin, do yourself a favor and check them out. Just extremely original, cool shit. Um, all uh, all uh, uh, accounts aside, I, I did send an email to Tomato in preparation for this podcast and I asked him a couple of questions and I, I, I won't go into the whole thing that, that, you know, we had gone back and forth about, cause I don't want to spend a whole lot of time just talking about the urchin set, but, um, it's really interesting because at the time they were sort of a band that just kind of got thrown together of like him and his friends. It's him and, uh, the other, uh, dude, his name is Barbie smooth. It was those two guys that just sort of like put the thing together as uh, just a fun like project to, to play music together. Made the EP, which we'll talk about in a second, which is just a five, six song EP on, on CD that they had at the time. And I think, um, you know, Claude and, and Diener and those guys had listened to it and were like, oh, you guys should open for us at the New Year's shows. And it was just like, boom, that's it. Like... From there, they became like a real band. And a couple of the guys that were in Urchin at the time basically were like, I didn't know this was going to happen, and I, <laughs> I'm not like ready for this. So it's like the band that they were for those like three shows, um, I I don't know this for sure, 100%, but I think it's it was only those three shows that those guys played all together as them, and that was it. After wow. that, it was it was it was back down to just Tomato, um, B. Ill, Bill Fowler, and Doo Doo Brown on bass. The other two guys, yeah, I think it was just the other two guys. The other two guys left because they're like, I didn't want to do this as like a career. I didn't want to do this as my as my life. It was just a fun thing to do, like for a, a weekend, you know, like that kind of thing. Man, <laughs> you know, some of that just comes across when you think about the antics on the stage and whatnot and uh just everything they were doing and being how ridiculous they were being it it really does kind of play into that idea of i mean we're just a one-shot deal here for a couple of the guys right i mean it's it's it you can tell that they're that they're they're you know like i said they're they're trying to get the crowd you know up and moving and they're trying to win the crowd over but they're also like having fun with it too 
You know what I mean? And it's just kind of like, okay, you know, if they love us, they love us. If they hate us, they hate us. But you know what? We're just going to fucking jam and, you know, and that's what they did. And it's just a, uh, just a great little set. And, uh, it's like a, a great example of the original Urchin tunes from the original Urchin EP, which again, if you, you know, if there's anyone listening to this, that's never heard it, check it out and check out their other stuff. Cause I mean, it's just a, a great band, very original, very unique. Um, oh, it's you know, just, cool just fantastic. And you it, might say the EP is green, green, gold. <laughs> Green Green Gold is the last song that they played and just fucking jam the shit out. Um, but uh, they they certainly joined the Ween family at, at, after after these shows. Would you, would you say that that's accurate? Yeah, they become I mean, part of the the uh, Ween family tree of music. Right, right. You know, it's like if you could, you want to call them a Ween spinoff or whatever. Okay, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? It's like. Uh, you know, um, they, they, they won the ween crowd over, which is no easy task, but they did it, you know? So definitely a a great time. Um, I mentioned the EP because the, uh, tambourine player, Richard Rickles was, (laughs) (laughs) so so really quick, I want to add that, uh, sound urchin does a fantastic job of, of, uh, nicknames, you know, like it's. Oh, right. You have to have stage yeah, names, I, and you have to have right. good stage names, and I, and they do a great job of having good stage names. Right. So it's it. I I I should have I should have clarified that. Yeah, I'm just mentioning these guys like everyone knows. It's Tomato Eleven, um, B Ill, the Reverend B Ill, Bill Fowler, uh, Barbie Smooth at the time, Doo Brown on bass, and then Richard Rickles on tambourine. So I'm pretty sure that was all the guys that played for those three shows. So and, so was Rickles the guy throwing the the EPs into the crowd and just dancing yeah, up there? Yeah. Yeah. So basically like he was on tambourine and just dancing. I think there's a couple of, of clips on YouTube of video clips of them um on YouTube as well. I'm not sure sure exactly what you have to search for, but I think there's a couple of clips. Not the whole set, but um a couple of cool clips that you can see what we're talking about. But yeah, Richard Rickles was on tambourine and just dancing on stage like the whole time. And at a couple of of points, he was throwing CDs into the crowd. Like here, check us out, you know, check out the CD and threw out some CDs. And our friend Corey, Corey with a C caught one. And we were just like ecstatic. It was just like, Oh, it was phenomenal. Cause I was like watching those things come in the crowd, like projectiles. Like I was like, Oh my God, if, if yeah. I try to catch this, I'm going to get hit in the face. <laughs> so and yeah, so I to mean, have one of us catch it was fantastic. And and because of that, you know, this is like, you know, pre, you know, excessive internet. You can find anything you want right away. So if if he if one of us hadn't gotten that EP, we may not have really ever kind of learned more about Sound of Urchin, you know? that That is very true. That is very true. And I remember... That was one of the first CDs that I ever made, like a copy of, um, the CD, like like burnt a CD from that CD, like back in in those days, you know that was a that was a high tech thing. Yeah. You know to to put like the CD into your computer, put those tracks onto your computer, and then burn a CD from that. Like we never, I never had a, a Sound of Urchin like EP tape. It was like, oh, we got to make a CD from that. Yeah. You know? So that was one of the first, like, CDRs I ever had was the Urchin EP. And um, th- listen to it, uh, it like crazy. Just, like, listen to the shit out of it. But, yeah, I mean, just, I was I was hooked. I was, after, after seeing them live and after listening to that first EP, I was hooked. And I've been an Urchin fan. Yeah, since. so a fantastic opener. Um, which sets up the whole evening to be just great because because if you have a fantastic opener that's getting the crowd riled up and not just pissed off then um, then I think you're doing the right thing and and so it sets it up to be a fantastic night so um, do you want to um, dive in and uh, go through the set list and then sure sure okay so let's do so they played for probably like Urchin played for probably what, like a half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Oh, yeah, something like that. Um, it was a pretty, it was a substantial opener. It yeah. wasn't just like two songs. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like 45 minutes, like total. But, um, 
But yeah, just a great, uh, a great time seeing them for the first time. And then, uh, and then fucking Ween comes out. So I'm just going to roll down the whole, um, set list and then we can go back and, and make some comments. Yeah, and stuff. go for so, it. 1999 pork, pork roll, egg and cheese. Don't shit where you eat. Voodoo lady. Now I'm freaking out. Waving my dick in the wind. Dr. Rock. Freedom of 76. Pandy Fackler. Buckingham Green. Spider Meningitis. Frank. Tender Situation. The Mollusk. Piss Up a Rope. Big Jill. Back to Basem. Take Me Away. Mr. Richard Smoker. Fat Lenny. Puerto Rican Power. Homo Rainbow. Stroker Ace. You Fucked Up. Baby Bitch. She Wanted to Leave. The Blarney Stone. And then for the encore, Birthday Boy, AIDS slash HIV song, Marble Tulip Juicy Tree, Ice Castles, and LMLYP. And all I can say right now is, wow. Like that is a that's a full night of of ween right there. I think the show clocks in at two hours and forty three minutes. Uh, if the last, you know, and then I think the the last recording I saw on YouTube, it took it right up to the end and didn't have like minutes of like bs afterward it was so a substantially long show um I, I i i feel like my personal sense or experience is that they the shows were longer back then uh close more than two and a half two hours and 45 and this one is right there uh you look at that set list man and it's just like a tour de force of amazing ween uh songs uh one after the other and of course uh, you know, if we're going to just kind of talk about highlights and go into some of these songs, I think the first one you got to say is 1999. I mean, Ween does not do covers often. And obviously it's January 1st of 1999. And obviously the entire world is like thinking about Prince's song Party Like It's 1999 and had been thinking about that for like 15 years and being like, man, I can't wait for 1999 because then we can party like it's 1999. Like, so, so it wasn't like it was a surprise, but at the same time, when they started with that, it was just like, oh my God, this is, this is awesome. You know? And it was just like, yeah. wow, they're, he's doing Prince, you know? And it's like, and of course yeah. the show ends with LMLYP. So there's totally like this Prince vibe that's like permeating yeah. the show. And you combine those two <laughs> songs and that's probably like 40 minutes of the show right there. Um <laughs> We'll get to LMLYP later. I timed LMLYP, but I didn't time uh, 1999, but I'm sure it was at least a few minutes. But anyway, um, so yeah, starting right off the bat with that, just, you know, six your teeth in. And then, of course, following up with pork rolling and cheese, right? So the show gets off on a fantastic start. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's it, it, it's sort of like, OK, you got 1999, which is like, boom, just like knocks you on your ass. And then they play a couple of um, they play a couple of kind of slow songs. So it's like pork roll, egg and cheese. Um, and I think Diener even says, uh, OK, we don't we don't want to just we don't want to just ram it in. We got to We got to lube you up first and then we'll you know, then we'll ram it in. So it's like pork roll, egg and cheese, followed by don't shit where you eat, which is kind of like an uncommon tune. And yeah, absolutely. that's a little that's an er, that's early for a song like that. Like you would put that sort of back, you know, at, at the at the bottom, you know, at the towards the end of the night. Um, in in my opinion, um, so it's like a hitch with 1999, and then they do a couple of like slower jams, so it sort of like cools things off, and like, Voodoo Lady is just like it's killer, and it and it's it's almost like the official start of the show, kind of, um. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like, okay, 1999 is like, holy shit, I wasn't expecting that. Got a couple of slow jams, just groovy, everyone's kind of settling in, and then Voodoo Lady is just like, bam, you know? Yeah, and, and at this um, point, um, the band, you know, as Ween, the, the five-piece band, uh, at this point, they're, they're honed, their craft is honed, you know? And, and a song right, like Voodoo Lady, right. you know, they've been rocking for a few years now, and so, as the group, and it's just, they just light it up, I mean... So, so right. at, at, in insofar as you're saying like, oh, it's kind of like the unofficial beginning of the show, I kind of see that too because it's like just a perfect version of Voodoo Lady, really. Um, and uh, and at that point in their history, it was just 
perfect craft and just like they're they're jamming and and that's like the extended jam you know one of the longer songs so it just brought it in it's like this is ween and we're serious tonight and so yeah it's yeah they dial it in um yeah we had sort of talked about um on our last episode which was the uh the 98 show from the truck, the beginning of 98, how as a five piece band, it, it, it's really starting to come together. And, you know, this is, this is a year later. This is, you know, January 1st, 99 or almost a year later. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're fucking, like we said about that show, they're firing on, on all cylinders. I mean, they played, you know, a lot of shows in, um, you know, 97 and 98, and now it's like they're back and it's not, uh, you know, it's take no prisoners. You know what I mean? Every, everything is, is everything is tight. Everything is together. You know, yeah. like you said, it's a long show and it, it's just, it's ween at the, at the top of their game. Absolutely. You know I mean? This to, it really is this to me, um, continue to go through more and more of our shows and everything. Um, this kind of is the beginning to me of like our classic period with Ween where we started to see a lot more shows and uh, do feel that these there's a few years there where they, as far as my experience, were just phenomenal uh, live act. And this is definitely one of those shows. Uh, you know, they follow Voodoo Lady up with Now I'm Freaking Out, which is just like an awesome – that's – you know that's pure gold when it's live, and in the middle of it, I you know I don't know if this is every time they play it. I, I'd have to look at other versions, but there's a sweet solo in "Now I'm Freaking Out," and it's kind of like I love those little gems where you know yeah you could step away from the big long jam songs and you play a little shorter song, but they you know Diener still puts in his beautiful solo. You know it's like right. they don't have to be eight minute jam songs for there to be amazing artistry going on with the music. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's another, you know, now I'm freaking out. That's another one. Um, um, that's, you know, that's a, that's a B side, you know what I mean? Back when, you know, B sides were still a thing, you know what I mean? Now I'm freaking out. That was one of those tunes where it was like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Didn't show up on anything up until, you know, now. So as far as we knew, it was just some crazy song, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, a, but a great one. And yeah, uh, just as good as as anything else that they played throughout the night really yeah and uh so this, speaking of other highlights uh penny fackler it, to me there's a few reasons why this is a great highlight um the one <laughs> the one is that uh that it's just a great to me it's just like a great example of the five-piece band growing together you know that's something that i kind of touch touch base on with all of these episodes that we cast is sort of the evolution of the band and um absolutely and so i feel like this is just a great example of like how they're growing as a big the five piece uh glenn's got the solo you know and it's just wonderful every time glenn has a solo i just think it's like the greatest thing on the planet um the, the other great thing about panty fackler um which you had put in your notes which was cool um it was Be- becky wagner right and so this is I, i'm assuming that uh it, it was becky wagner um I went back and looked and seen how many times they had played this. There's, there's some white pepper songs that, you know, you think are like brand new for, for this show, but they actually were played like a couple of times before, um, the the ones that they broke out, uh, on this specific night. Um, but I'm assuming it was Becky Wagner all the way up until, you know, now at least. And then at some point after that, they changed it to, to Pandy Flackler. Yeah. I don't really know. But for but for this night anyway for this show, um, it's everything is is Becky Wagner and uh, they announce it and they say this is they bullshit it and they say oh this is something we just wrote upstairs, which is obviously that's not true, but um, then but it's a <laughs> then new Gina song says, like you said it's, it's only played at a couple shows, so right it is still right it is it new. is new. Right, it is new, but um, you know, it wasn't just written that night or anything like that. But um, he says, to Aaron says, "Oh, and uh, that's Becky Wagner right there," and just points to somebody in the <laughs> crowd, and and people cheer. It's like there again. It's like, what the fuck is he being serious or what? You know, yeah. like we don't know. But you know, it's it's a, it's definitely an early version of of Pandy Fackler, and it starts differently than 
the way it would eventually come to to begin. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like if you listen to it, it doesn't start off with just the with just the guitar. It doesn't start like that. It starts off with the um, like the second piece, which is the. Mm-hmm. It starts like that, so it's like, no, wait a minute, it's not, it's like out of order, you know, but it's like an early version. Yeah, exactly. Of, of and, Dandy and you, you touched on something that I wanted to talk about, is that, um, you know, so they place a whole bunch of uh, White Pepper songs, and you know, we both obviously go to Brown Bass and uh, check stuff out, and I noticed, you know, that so many of these songs, it's like. This is like the second or third time that they were like ever played. Um, And that's just like, you know, and I think maybe some of them was the first time maybe, or am I, but, but anyway, they were like only played a couple times max. And it's like also a year and a half before white pepper even comes out. So this is like way before the album, you know? So, so I made a, I made a little, um, a little note here. So the White Pepper songs that were played for this three-night run, New York, Philly, and D.C., were Ice Castles, which we'll get back to in a minute, okay? Um, Pandy Fackler, both of which, Ice Castles and Pandy Fackler, were played uh, either once or twice before, okay? Back to Basem, which they played for the first time. I'll have to go back and check, but it was either in New York or D.C. It wasn't... uh, it wasn't in in Philly. Um, Stroke Race, which had been played twice before, and The Grobe. So, there you have five White Pepper songs that were played within those three nights. Mm-hmm. So that's basically, it's like, the new songs at the time. So this is, yeah, like you said, this is, this is a, a, over a year before... White Pepper would come out. Uh, White Pepper right, doesn't right, come out right. till May of 2000, I believe. And this is January right. 1999. It's just crazy to think like how far ahead, you know, like this is no longer uh, the Mollusk tour. It's way before White yeah. Pepper. So it's just like this, yeah. this middle period. And it's, it's neat to watch, to go to a show that isn't connected to an album because I think it ends I, up being a different kind of show. Yeah, I want to. I want to sort of talk about that at the, at at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, but well, yeah, but, you um, can hit up some more yeah, uh, abs- highlights. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, one of the things while we're talking about the White Pepper songs is part of the encore is Ice Castles, but it wasn't named yet. So, like, I remember getting. Um, I think I had gotten this on a cassette tape as well. I think it was probably the last time I got a, a, a cassette tape of a show. And then after that, every time I got a bootleg, it was on, it was on CD. But, um, but the tapes that I got, it, Ice Castles wasn't named that yet. And it just said the Baroque Jam. Yes. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I remember that now that you mention it. That's funny. Yeah. So that, so Ice Castles didn't even really have a name yet. Um, it wasn't until White Pepper would come out that, you know, that we learned that like, oh, that song is, is now called Ice Castles. Yeah. So like that shows you how early it was in, you know, the, the stage of the band. Um, but as far as other songs and other, uh, highlights, you know, music wise, um, just basically everything was was great um there's a really nice intro to baby bitch yeah the baby bitch that was one um that i had on my on my mind um just great and you know it's like i i again it's something where i feel like i don't it's like i don't that's not how they play it every time just to have this like subtle intro where um it's like you almost don't even know it's baby bitch and then it right. and then it turns into baby bitch. It's just like really really great. Um, Puerto Rican power is always a highlight of any show. Um, totally, it was great because then Homo Rainbow uh, was sort of impromptu, I guess, because uh, Reverend Beal right was coming up to play. Yeah, they get um, they stop for a couple of minutes and they're like, oh, we're gonna get Bill Fowler, which is Reverend Beal from Sound of Urchin, to come out and play guitar. And then Aaron says. 
Uh, it's going to take about 10 minutes to set up. So they just sort of just start in a little thing like, okay, what can we do while we're waiting? And Aaron just starts singing Homo Rainbow, and they just do a little Homo Rainbow kind of, I don't want to call it a tease. It's more than a tease, but it's just like a little, you know, thing they just put together real quick. Just, you know, many colors in the Homo Rainbow, and just bust that out and, you know, it's like, yeah, throw that in there, man, totally. Um, so that there again, that's kind of a B-side. That was from the South Park uh, album, but it's a, just a real, like, cool little jazzy version of it because it's just real simple you know so they do that while they're waiting to to get bill fowler set up for guitar and i think that was one of the first times that was like the second time that was ever played too i think homo rainbow something like that yeah very right 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 um yeah and then after that they set up reverend beale to play stroke or ace is really what he's there to 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 you know play guitar on and of course, that's like a, you know, that's an in-your-face jam that we had never heard yeah, before. Yeah, totally. Because that's another White Pepper song. Um, so that was a highlight. Um, and what else? Marble Tulip Juicy Tree is fucking, I mean, that's kind of a, especially at that time, that was a pretty rare jam. Yeah, no, that's another and, one for me that's like, oh my God, they're playing Marble Tulip Juicy Tree. You know, right. it's just like, ah, I can't believe it. It's awesome. Yeah, and that's a great rendition of it, too. Um, with a extended ending, with, like, the echoes and the, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, just really fucking awesome shit. Well, this encore is and, just great. Um, Birthday Boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, HIV song, which, yeah, to me, that's a little bit throwaway, I guess. If I may, I mean, forgive me, Ween. But, um... <laughs> birthday boy marble tulip juicy tree the new ice castles um and then of course lmlyp yeah and yeah. to yeah. tell you that um so th- at this point at the show you know we the, the show's two hours and plus into the show there was an opening band you know we had been rocking and rolling since we uh, left Oli. so at this point uh, it's definitely kind of getting i'm, I'm kind of getting worn down a little bit just like man whew, you know like like this has been a big rock and roll show and then yes um and they lay down lmrp and at this point i didn't even really know what that was i don't think i was really familiar with um uh, uh godwin satan right but right. um so at that point and so it was kind of like what is this and then it was like oh my god and then and i it's funny because the last you know 20 years 15 years it's been like i always sort of thought like man that was a really long version that was like that went on forever and then i actually you know just timed it before you know, earlier today as i was re-listening to the show and it was about 31 minutes long oh man that's fucking insane 31 minute long well really really what it is if you if you break it down if you if you listen to the to the whole jam it's every one of the members takes a, a a pretty long solo yes in that jam. it's like they they just go around and everybody takes a a solo everyone gets a nice healthy a nice solo. a nice one yeah a nice one at that right exactly um but yes i do remember being like by the time they were like halfway into that it was kind of like okay uh you know how much longer is this gonna go you know it was one of those things where it was like are they gonna are they going to outlast the crowd? You know, is the crowd going to start dropping by the time, you know, this thing ends? You know, it was it was definitely a very long jam. And, uh, yeah, I remember going to some of the other people that were with us and just being like, how are you holding up? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I um, specifically remember, do, like, saying that. Some like, of the straights. Okay, this is, you know, how are you guys yeah, doing? So, yeah, exactly. Like you guys, okay? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like it's like some of our friends that were at the show. Probably their only ween they ever listened to is probably the mollusk right before the show, and now it's like, oh my god, they right. got thirty one minute LMO IP. Like, what yeah, are you gonna do with yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was phenomenal. Uh, Glenn, you know, everyone's solos were great. Glenn, uh, like I said earlier, every time he has a solo, it's just awesome. I love it. And and the same with Dave. I just love the bass solo. It's just a lot of fun. Um, totally. And, you know, I, it's specific, you know, it's hard for me to dive much deeper because it's a 31 minute song filled with solos. But uh, 
Yeah. But man, it just it, that's that legend. The legend, like part of the legend of the show for me is like thirty minute LMIP, thirty one minutes long. You know, it's like I that's the longest song that I've heard live for Ween. Like they've never played anything else that long as far as far as I can remember. Like that's definitely the longest jam, the longest like song that I've heard live. Yeah. Well, I remember um, getting, you know, I had mentioned that I had gotten this on tape as a, as a bootleg after the fact, you know, after the show. And um, I'm pretty sure that the entire show would fit on one tape front and back, you know, two sides. And then there was like a second tape, which just had that song on it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember if it was exactly, you know, or maybe it was just like the, uh, uh, just like Ice Castles and that or something. Probably if you had 60 it, minute sides on your tape or if it was like an extended yeah, play. Some, so I, I, you know, I don't remember, but I just remember it was like the whole reason why it was on like two tapes instead of just one was because <laughs> that song was so long. That's amazing. It was because that jam was so long. And then same thing when, when, um, you know, when everything transitioned over to CDs and, you, you know, you still got like the CDs in the mail, um, you know, it was three discs and the disc three was like just that. Yeah. You know, so it was, <laughs> you know, it's a big show when it's on three discs. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like that, right. that's almost like so a standard. Definitely... Like if it has to be put on three discs, then, uh, then that's getting right. to that point where it's a nice long show. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, just a fucking great, you know, long jam, um, which uh, again shows you where they are in in their uh, in their career, and all of them can take a solo in a in a long jam, and it's you know it's the shit. Yeah, and they're all filled um, with energy, and like um, you know they're all like committing to those jams. You know, it's just like really great, and you, I, you just sense the energy and that that togetherness that they've been developing over the last few years. Um, LMLYP, you know, like summarizing it all up with that that song is like a great way to kind of sum up the whole show really. Right. Absolutely. Um, what else? We'll just mention a couple of the, uh, a couple of the things that they, they talk about through the show at the beginning. Um, Aaron says, uh, Oh, pork roll, egg and cheese. Yeah. We, we want to, we want to play pork roll, egg and cheese. And then he says, we'll play pork roll for the mummers, <laughs> which is, Anybody that doesn't uh, know, that's a Philadelphia thing. Yeah. Um, for the mum, the Mummers Day Parade, the mummer Mummers are like, a, I guess the best way to, to describe it is like a clown, um, and it's a traditional thing in Philadelphia that you have your the Mummers Day Parade and the and the the Mummers um, march through the city um, every New Year's Day and uh, and it's just like a big party. It's kind of like Mardi Gras. Yeah, it's, it's Philly's kinda, it's, it's Philly's it's, Mardi Gras. With- you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's always it's always on New Year's Day, um, so that's what that that's what he's talking about. We want to play that for the mummer. Yeah, after uh, so that's a f- I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Now, after now, I'm freaking out. Um, there's it's interesting. There's almost like a little bit of a sorry Charlie tease that I thought is interesting. Okay, where I maybe they were talking to someone in the crowd and someone was requesting it and they like repeated it back, but you know re-listening to the show it's like almost like they're gonna tease sorry charlie and then they don't do it <laughs> right 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 um what else oh at, at one point i i didn't get to, to put down when this actually happens but you hear diener say um yeah yeah i'll take them and and then he goes butterscotch crimpets and somebody must have just been like here do you want these and and threw up a box of, of butterscotch crimpets and then aaron says hey aren't those from philadelphia See, there again, that's a Philly reference for anyone not from the area because it's a, a box of Tasty Cakes, um, which is like the local version of like a, a Little Debbie or like a, a – it's like a snack cake. And butterscotch crimpets is one of the more popular ones. So someone had, had threw up a box of butterscotch crimpets on the, it's also, on the stage. It's also funny because Aaron's saying that as if he's not from the Philadelphia area. <laughs> And like that, Eve would even say Philadelphia as a whole word, like and not, aren't those from <laughs> Philly, or you know, it's like he's clearly like playing this up, like to to make yeah. sure everyone to make sure everyone knows what he's doing, you know, with with them or whatever. It's so it's like an interesting yeah. moment of comedy. 
I know. It's like, hey, aren't those from Philadelphia? It's like, dude, you're from fucking Philadelphia. We know you're from Philadelphia. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> making sure he gets making sure he gets the name of the of the, uh, the city that the show is being played in. Like, yeah, he's, he's making sure that he's saying it for everyone to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, we talked about the Pandy Fackler thing. Is still Becky Wagner. Um, after tender situation, Diener has a has a good quote which is just it's really simple but he just says uh we're gonna break it down we're gonna break it all the way down which i just love that it's so stupid did um, um also like lean over really far to play guitar for that song yeah oh oh i'm sure i'm sure i, yeah. I you know i actually need to start um, paying it you know a lot of times when i'm listening to these shows to kind of re to remember you know, everything was happening I'm just doing stuff in the house and sort of listening but i need to listen i need to watch them because i want to keep track of when uh, when diener bends all the way over you know leans all the way over to play yeah. the guitar right to the ground uh, that's what we should we should count how many times he does that yeah. in the next you know the, the next episode that we do we'll have to watch the video and, and count how many times yeah. he leans make it over. make a count for that but dude it, yeah yeah but I, you know what else can um, i say it was a fantastic show um front to back I, you know it's and it, you know it's sort of obviously of that time because you don't have any of the newer material right like you don't have you know well, well, a little bit of white pepper but it's not like you have um you know any of the newer albums so it's all like old school music it's like all the old school albums um so it just that to me throw that with a two hour and 40 minute show and you're gonna have a fantastic set list because that the new albums aren't fantastic but these are just more like just the old school it's just a little bit more mythical right right well, okay, so we'll we'll kind of wrap it up, but but the the one thing I did want to say is that this is sort of like this era to me, and maybe it's just from our own personal experience, or um, maybe someone else you know can kind of uh, uh, confirm this. It's like this is an era for Ween where the alternative scene is sort of like coming to a close. You know, this is the beginning of 1999. And it's sort of like the start of Ween as its own thing, if that makes any sense. It's like instead of just part of like it, the alternative jam scene or whatever. Right. Like in like in my in my take on it is like the Beavis and Butthead era, so to speak, is officially over. <laughs> okay. So like you had those like those crazy '90s like alternative bands, and it's like either. You're gonna get left behind in the in the dust as that's like coming to a close, or you're gonna go on and you know sort of have your own career and your own life, and that is what Ween is starting to like become. Yeah, absolutely. With a show like this, it's like like you have like these three shows, and it's a perfect example of like okay, New York, Philly, D.C. I'm pretty sure all three of them are sold out. This night was definitely sold out, and. It's not really, you had mentioned, it's not really attached to anything. It's just, they're just playing. It's not like the Mollusk Tour or, you know, the Country Album Tour or, you know, the Chocolate and Cheese Tour or what. It's it's not connected to anything. It's just its own thing. It's a New Year's it's Tour. It's its own. It's a, it's, right. It's a New Year's Tour, quote unquote, the New Year's shows. But there's nothing to, like, promote. There's nothing that's you know, oh, this album just came out and now they're on tour to support it. No, it's just these shows by themselves and they completely stand on their own. All three nights are sold out and it's sort of like the beginning of, of Ween as like it detaches from that like alternative music scene um, and they start becoming their own thing. You know what I mean? Not that they were ever not their own thing, but like I said, any kind of popularity or any sort of like following that they would have gotten from um, like the Beavis and Butthead or like the Chocolate and Cheese era, you know, being on MTV on like 120 minutes and like all that kind of stuff is sort of like coming to a close. And they're gaining their own momentum and their own popularity based solely on like the live performance. Yeah. Uh, you know something else you know. that um, we'll have to do some research uh, between the next show, uh, the next Weencast, and and if any of the listeners out there can add input on this, 
but by all means, leave it in the notes on uh, YouTube or uh, email us. But um, when was um, when was Fish on hiatus? You know, I know, f- uh, you know, in the late '90s, Fish started having the old "we're gonna break up" or "we're gonna go on hiatus" for a little while, and they're gonna come back, and they're gonna break up and go on hiatus for a while. Um, that, but that hadn't happened yet, or were they still? Was Fish still Fish pre hiatus no, at fish this point? Went, fish Fish played until um, I think right around uh, September 11th, because I know that I know that Fish still toured up until the year 2000. Gotcha. I yeah, I think it was like between 2000 and 2001 that they started the hiatus, which was like three. Gotcha. Years, okay, so four years. So so that has nothing to so then. Just kind of forget that I went on that tangent, but we'll bring no, that up in the next not, few episodes. Why that might be important? Yeah, I mean it's 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 a little bit after it's a it's another like year or so after this. Yeah. After this okay, show. so that's but it's it's no, you're not you're not totally off. It's 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 coming up at, you know shortly after after this like uh, after this era of of the band. Um, but that that's another good uh, that's another good point to make. Um, but yeah, that sort of starts into like the jam band, quote unquote, like scene, which, you know, it's like, yeah, once fish goes on hiatus and we'll talk more about that because now is not the right time. But I, my hypothesis is that you see this huge influx of sort of jam band fans, fans and fish fans going to see ween as a way to, right. to make up for not being able to go see fish. Um, and then right, you start seeing right, a huge right. explosion into the bigger venues and stuff. But uh, clearly right. they're not there yet because Fish was still rocking and rolling pre hiatus era, and um, and obviously this is in Trocadero, which is a small venue, so it's still even though it's sold out, it's a small venue. It's not like they're playing to ten thousand people, five thousand people, or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it wouldn't be. It, it, it's like like we said, it's it's not like attached to like any album really. This show, you know, this set of shows, um, painting the town brown would be the next thing that would be like released. And that wasn't until that summer it was June 22nd of, of 99. So, you know, and there again, it's like, we talked about the white pepper songs. It's like, that's not until the, the next year that's May 2000. So it's like this, these shows were really like, you know, just sort of on their own yeah. and they're, you know, they're great. You know, they're absolutely great shows to, to, to listen to to go back and listen to um especially this you know this specific night yeah man it was a fantastic um, show that's all that's my final yeah. my final word is just man yeah. phenomenal show we at its best oh if you haven't listened one, to this one this this show find it on youtube and listen to it tonight one one personal note just going back to our own you know experience um before and after the show it was right after this that we took our trip to canada <laughs> we took a we took a long weekend trip to uh to canada just mississauga to, just to yeah mississauga outside of toronto just to drink because we were not i just at, yeah we were all 19 or whatever yeah just to drink at age 19 you know i was i, was, I a, was 20 but you were 19 yeah 19 and 20 none of us were actually 20 no it was, so it was like well oh. that's funny in itself but after a long ass day of ween and we get back to Oli, go to sleep and then the plan is to wake up at like five in the morning or some shit and go get the rental car and then go off to canada so so that's quite the adrenaline yeah. but being so exhausted <laughs> and having to drive all the way to canada with yeah. a rental car but but you know that's that's for the that's a whole nother podcast but um yeah, I know. But I just had to throw that in there because I remember that night just, you know, like screaming at each other, just like, we're going to Canada. And it's just like the most ridiculous trip. Yeah, that was, yeah, you know, that was a just... pretty crazy trip. <laughs> but it all started yeah, in Philadelphia man. on January 1st with the Ween Show. It, uh, that's right. It all started with that Ween yeah. Show. That's right. So if you haven't listened to that show, do yourself a favor, go back and check it out. Yeah. Um, uh, one last thing I'd like to just throw out there quick is um, we got to, if you want to send us an email to uh, share your thoughts about any of these shows, um, that's fantastic. We have a address that is a uh, weencast podcast at gmail.com. Uh, all one word. Um, so it's out there. So, you know, by all means, you know, email us if you have questions or, um, comments about the shows um i'm happy to get your feedback on for anything love to hear from you guys but if you're just gonna 
email me to tell me the 10 things that I'm doing wrong and how to do it your way, then uh, it's cool. I probably won't listen to you. <laughs> well, we're trying to make... You know, we're, we're trying to make each episode a little bit better than the last. You know, we're trying to make the the audio quality and, and, and everything uh, improve as we go along. Um, so so bear with us. You know, if there's anyone here that's that's listened to the other episodes and, uh, uh, you know, you can tell, I think we're, we're trying to, to keep improving the quality of them. But yeah, hit us up. It's, uh, it's weencastpodcast at gmail to send us an email. Um, drop a comment, uh, you know, on YouTube or on Twitter. It's also at Weencast Podcast. So it's Weencast Podcast for for Twitter and for uh, for Gmail. Cool. Yeah, I hope to hear from and some of you guys out there. And yeah, we did get a think. couple of we did get a few uh, comments, which we just we love hearing. You know, we love hearing anything. So please drop a comment or you know send us an email with uh, with your thoughts if you were at this show. Um, if you were at the other two shows that we were talking about from that New Year's run, you know, hit us up with anything, please. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Anybody that's out there uh, that's listening to this. Yeah, man, thanks for giving us your time. I, it's – how can I say that anything more except that it's really – I really appreciate that someone's willing to listen to us uh, describe our experiences and chat about Ween. So it's awesome. Absolutely. All right. That's all I have. All right, guys. Have a good night, world. All right. Later.